Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of today's tutorial, we shall be stepping into the chapter 4 of set C and shall be looking forward to understand the questions related to test techniques, which would be very, very crucial and important in your examination and plays a vital role with respect to their preparation as well. So please uh, have your 100% concentration when you're looking at each and every detail of this particular tutorial and related from the chapter 4, which helps you on a long run uh, to succeed this examination with ease. So let's get started. The very uh, first question from this chapter we have is question number 19. And this says, uh, what is the main difference between black box test techniques and experience based test techniques? I think again, the category should be recalled at this point of time. And we had a very first topic where we highlighted to you a lot of fundamental concepts uh, related to differentiation between the categories. And that's exactly what the question is, because they are trying to differentiate between the two categories that is black box and experience space. Let's look at the options quickly. Option A says uh, the test object. Uh, indeed, the test object will not be different. The reason is uh, the test object remains the same uh, no matter what you're trying to test, any level, any type of testing. The application, uh, the fundamental functionality of the product would remain the same. So it does not change the object which you are testing. Uh, the approach certainly varies, so it's not the right option. Option B says uh, the test level at which the test technique is used. Uh, no, experience-based testing or uh, black box-based techniques can be applied at any level. There are no such hard and fast rule written anywhere that this particular technique is only restricted to unit integration system, etc. So we may easily say that uh, the techniques are not restricted to any particular level. So let's not make that sort of conclusion at this point of time. Let's move to option C. Option C says uh, the test basis. Yes, uh, that's pretty much correct because uh, in our tutorials, we clearly highlighted to you that the basis are different for black box test techniques. We need detailed requirements for white box testing techniques. We need the code access and knowledge of code. And at the same time for experience base, we need the past experience, domain knowledge and knowledge of typical defects. So the basis are certainly different. And if I talk about option D, option D says the software development life cycle in which the test technique can be used. Uh, test techniques are not relevant to uh, a particular SDLC. They are open to all. So I can use the same techniques and waterfall as well as agile methodology. So there are no such restrictions about the test techniques. They are open to all the SDLC models. So that also goes uh, invalid for this particular question. So I think it's very straightforward now to put together the right answer for this particular question is C, the test basis plays a vital role in differentiating between the two categories that is black box test techniques and experience based test techniques. So yes, sir, you may have theoretical questions coming up from the 4.1, the very first topic where we introduced the categories to you. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is question number 20. And here we are talking about equivalence partition. The question is a little tricky. So let's uh, pay attention to it. It says uh, you are testing a pin validator which accepts valid pins and rejects invalid pins. A pin is a sequence of digits. So you got the first information here. Uh, it only contains digits. Uh, pin is valid if it consists of four digits and at least two of them are different. So I think uh, we just have to keep it very simple. Uh, it's just a four digit value and uh, all of them are digit, but the criteria is it has to be four digit value. That is number are only four, but any two digits should be different. Okay, it's not that all the four numbers can be same. So you cannot just basically feed in one, 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 one. Uh, I said five times, I think so, <laughs> one, 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 one. So it's just that like in any two digits should be different from each other. And as far as two digits are different, we will accept it as this. So in order to create this, uh, we first have to land up creating the partitions because as I told you in many of my tutorials and all my live sessions that uh, it's always good practice to solve the equivalence partition and other related techniques first before you look at the options. Because as and when you start looking at the options, it's very easy to get diverted very easy to get diverted. So do not try to solve this in the air. 
make use of pen and paper which is allowed to you in the examination and try to solve it put it on the paper and then get it right now here there are multiple things to be taken care so let's look at the table the table what we have created here is number one i see the factor as input length and here i can create three partitions because the valid is only four digit so one two three becomes my invalid and number four becomes invalid and i'm just giving a notation to them l1 l2 and l3 where l1 and l3 are invalid and l2 is only the valid one whereas uh, if i talk about the type of values that is digits then pin with the same digit i'm calling it as d1 which is one partition and d2 is pin with two different digits okay that means the valid one so the first one d1 becomes invalid and d2 becomes valid now if i just talk about the outputs which we are expecting that is o1 that is legal uh, pin that is fulfilling the l2 and d2 whereas o2 output 2 is illegal pin which can be any other combination so our objective of minimizing the test cases uh, for any of these technique is that we should always try to test uh, any each of these partitions and respective outputs with minimum number of test cases okay that's the only objective so i need to find out the minimum test cases to hit every single partition uh, without you know uh, skipping any one of them so let's look at the options now because now we have the table we can easily justify our answer and make it more uh, beneficial however we have an answer uh, with our mind already because what is the valid output but i have to hit every single partition but before that what's the question the question says uh, which of the following set of inputs test data cover all equivalence partition for this scenario so let's start figuring them out so option a says one one two one 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 two three four one two three four five six so let's start answering them because uh, that's more important for us to see how exactly uh, that fits into our table so if i see the first value 112 it covers d2 l1 and uh, g2 okay so d2 goes with the digit 2 which is uh, the combination then l1 is my length which is going down with the invalid input is covered and g2 also gets covered because that's where the invalid output is whereas 111 that is four times one covers d1 l2 g2 and one two three four covers d2 l2 and g1 whereas one two three four five six covers d2 l3 and uh, g2 so one way if you see i've covered d1 i've covered d2 i've covered l1 l2 and l3 as well and i've covered g1 and g2 that means almost everything not almost i should say every single partition is hit with minimum that is four test cases but i never know if i can do it with three options as well so let's check out the other options the option b here says uh, one then one two three then four times one then one two three four now if i just uh, correlate with our table uh, it, it does not cover l3 here uh, one covers the d1 l1 and g2 one two three covers d2 l1 and g2 four times one covers uh, d1 then l2 g2 and one two three four five covers d2 g2 and g1 but if you see l3 i have no values listed here which gets covered above four so that's not something which i can conclude saying that this is the best combination to hit all the partitions right l3 is not covered if i go to option c option c says uh, 12 112 1112 and 11112 right so again in this case d1 is not getting covered okay because uh, d1 is talking about the pin with same digits right because uh, we need to try every single partition so as usual uh, one two covers d2 l1 and uh, g2 then one one two covers d2 l1 g2 uh, triple one two covers d2 then l2 and g1 and four times one two covers d2 l3 and g2 but d1 i do not have any uh, value available here let's go to option d option d is uh, again kept very straightforward one three times one four times one and five times one again here if you notice uh, it does not cover d2 uh, and g1 as well so uh, basically d2 is uh, <clears throat> the outputs uh, i think i represented uh, g as o okay because i had something else in mind which is uh, the output the gained output so let's go with o 
okay or as a g being represented as uh, option uh, o so that's uh, pretty much what we had so one uh, goes with uh, the d1 then l1 and o2 and uh, triple one covers d1 l1 and g o2 and uh, four times one cover d1 l2 and o2 and four five times one covers d1 l3 and o2 so just correct yourself uh, the uh, myself, I should correct myself. So O2 is basically uh, the representation as G2 here, what I was talking about. So just replace that with the values. So I think uh, that makes it pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, the right answer for this particular question is A, that is 1, 1, 2, 4 times 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 covers all partitions listed here, including the digits related inputs, partitions, the uh, length related pa partitions and the both uh, outputs that is a one and o2 so that's what we need so we need to uh, have a perfect table uh, represent with some annotations and that's how you should start striking them off and then make sense that you have the right answer with you right let's move on to the next question the next question we have is question number 21 and this is related to boundary value analysis uh, i think boundary value analysis are always kept straightforward so should not be a problem uh, it says a developer was asked to implement the following business rule input value as an integer number the program here is if value is less than or equal to 100 or value is greater than or equal to 200 then write value incorrect else write value is okay so in simple words anything between 101 to 199 is considered value okay and 100 and below is incorrect 200 and above is incorrect okay so the annotations with the operators are very important if the operators are unclear that is where you may go wrong and that's very easy to go wrong right so you need to pay attention to the operators and uh, make sure that you have the right uh, uh, step uh, mentioned and the partitions created and that's how you can easily come to the conclusion further to read the question the question says you design the test cases using two value boundary value analysis which of the following set of test script achieves the greatest coverage? And uh, I think uh, let's look at the table here, what we need, because that's an easy way to do it. So the table is straightforward as I discussed. So we will have one partition less than or equal to 100, then 101 to 199, and then greater than or equal to 200 will be again incorrect. So I think all my values are on the screen, 100, 101, 199, and 200. These are the four values which we should get as per boundary value analysis okay because two point analysis gives me only four values but what's the question that's very important so i have my answer as per the technique but let's cross check with the question the question says uh, you design the test cases uh, with using two point analysis which of the following set of test inputs achieves the greatest coverage now the word greatest coverage does not mean that you are asking all the boundary values the one in the option which covers the maximum out of those four is the right answer okay so that's very important thing to be taken into account that are they asking you all the partitions or they're asking you the maximum the reason is many of us will come back stating that hey none of the answer is correct because they never asked all of them they asked greatest that means maybe out of these four options nothing has all the four options okay all the four boundary values so that's the reason they mentioned greatest so let's start checking it out Option A here says 100, 150, 200, and 201. You have the table by the side. So you can say 100 is a boundary value, 200 is a boundary value, but 150 and 201 are not. So we are covering only two boundary values in option A. Let's check B, 99, 100, 200, 201. Again, 99 and 201 are not boundary values, only 100 and 200 are. So this also covers two of them. C, 98, 99, 100, 101. So 101, so again, we have only two of them covered, 50% coverage, that is 100 and 101. And if I see option D, I have 101, then 150, then we have 199, 200. But if you notice here, 101 is my boundary value, 199 is my boundary value, and 200 is also boundary value, but 150 is not. But if you see, we are covering three out of four, which is 75%, okay, and again, not to waste further time, I think that's very straightforward. The right answer to this particular question is 
D that is 101, 150, 199, 200 because this option is the only option which covers 75% that is 3 out of 4 boundary values but of course none of them has the 100% coverage because the question clearly said that we are asking for the greatest. Okay, so let's not conflict because many people would say that none of the option were correct because they did not read the question carefully. Please remember team, if you go wrong and you have a conflict in misunderstanding or you have something wrong with your conclusions, you have missed something in your question. Okay, so read the question once again. There are no ISTQB examinations which do not have the clarity provided to you in the examination. Okay, so read the question carefully, have confusions, read it again, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.